Yes, I see you. The boss is telling me it's time to start worship, so I guess we're going to start worship. We lift our praises to you, O oh God. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Good morning. Good morning. It is a wonderful morning to come together and worship, to bow at the foot of the cross, to sit at the foot of the throne, to gather together in fellowship and celebrate and rejoice and embrace one another. It is a good morning, even if it is not February, despite what the weather feels like outside. Um, announcements. Uh, first, immediately after worship, there is a congregational meeting. I feel like we have had so stinking many congregational meetings this year. I am sorry, but we need to have at least one more. There's a congregational meeting for the purpose of electing a session member. Um, I also know that the nominee for session, if somebody were to nominate themselves, they would withdraw their nomination. And so I feel like I would love to serve on session. You can definitely get elected today if you like. Um, <laughs> otherwise, that should be in, out, sort of, short sort of thing. So after me, after uh, worship, there is a congregational meeting. Um, other announcements this week. Thursday at 4.30 is a session meeting. Um, activities, chair aerobics, Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Wednesday night program. The final Wednesday night program, family night, is at 5.30 this Wednesday. Upcoming events, next Sunday is a guitar service. Um, me and Bruce and Randy Goslin and Clayton are going to be leading the music. So it should be good, otherwise service will be normal, but just the four of us uh, leading the music, so that'll be great. And then session is Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, session is Tuesday. Um, May 9th is the women's mini retreat at 11 a.m. And then May 11th, Thursday, Women at Brothers. And then May 1st through the 7th, I am on study leave, and I begged and pleaded and whined, and Wendy is going to leave worship, so. Everybody else is <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying there wasn't a re reason, but I did beg and plead and whine, and I am putting you in very good hands, and we all know that I'm putting you in very good hands, so. Uh, be sure to not skip church that Sunday, because the sermon will be significantly better. <laughs> Are there any other announcements that I, oh, yes, I do have more announcements that are written on my paper. Um, the first Sunday of May, we are participating in, what is it called? World's Largest Diaper Drive. And the World's Largest Diaper Drive. You know that we gave money from the Mission Outreach to Heine Heroes, and they are participating in a nationwide world's largest diaper drive. The goal is to collect two million diapers worldwide. There will be something out in Arthex for you to drop off diapers if you want. Also, I know they will take cash donations. So uh, yeah, first Sunday of May, we will be doing participating in the world's largest diaper drive. And then scholarship applications are out if you are a college student or an advanced student of some sort or technical or technical training student or something and need scholarship money, the scholarship applications are out. They are due May 15th. Talk to Sally if you have any additional questions. All right, now I'm getting my announcements. Does any, Wendy, what? Ten o'clock, operating. Oh, I don't have one. I had one, I don't know where it went. Um, but we are, we will be collecting for the Pentecost offering. What Sunday is Pentecost? I will come with you, young lady. I, that's great. Nope, that's on music. I don't know. Towards the end of May. It's towards the end of May. It's seven weeks after Easter. If I could tell you when that was, I would, but I can't off the top of my head. Um, so. Uh, 
we will be collecting the Pentecost offering uh, through Pentecost. That is to for education and training and goes towards, part of it goes towards our theological seminaries. So you got a flyer with some information in it this Sunday. Am I wrong about which one this one goes to? One goes to kids. Oh, this one goes to kids. Okay, sorry. Pentecost goes to kids. One of them goes partially to the seminaries. Um, this one goes to kids, and so please give. I believe we also keep like half of this one. And so this is also like if you want to donate to our kids as well as kids in other areas, this is a good one to donate to. And again, you have the information packet in front of you. I don't know where Oh, it's right there. I found it. 28. It is. Good job, Barty. It's the 28. <laughs> um, yes, so 40% stays here, and that will go to the Winston program. 25% uh, goes to young adult volunteers, which are basically young adult mission workers. 25% um, supports ministries with youth. Um, that includes the Youth Triennium, which is in, I don't remember, not this year, I believe it's next year, the following year. And then 10% uh, is devoted to children at risk and supports to improve education and provide safe havens. So, if you're interested in giving to the Pentecost offering, remember 40% stays here, um, and our youth program can always use funding, and then 60% uh, goes to really great programs around the denomination. So, if you have any questions about this, uh, we will have more complete information to share with you next week. Are there any other announcements that I missed? Yes? to Risa and Dean is doing well. He is driving, but he doesn't think that things are progressing quite as they should. Um, but in Diane's very wise words, when you do something like that to your body, it takes a while for your body to stop being mad at you. So um, we do that. Also, I see the other announcement. And the, if you remember a couple weeks ago, there was toilet paper on the communion table. And I said, if you see something on the communion table, that's what we need. Um, I was told that we are running out of pasta mixes and pasta meals. And so um, that's what the Blessing Box needs. We're going through them and we're running low. And so if you're looking for something specific to give the Blessing Box, that's what we're in need of right now. Now I think I've come to the end of the announcements, have I? Great. Well, let's take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and our in our call to worship. Oh yes, Lord, I am definitely your servant. I am your servant as the son of your female servant. You freed me from my chains. So I'll offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to you. And I'll not call on the Lord's name. I'll keep the promises I made to the Lord. In the presence of all God's people. Please rise, F. Abel, and join us in the hymn, We Walk by the Faith and Not by the Sight.
something I haven't seen in a long time around here, people grabbing hymnals. So I am sorry that the words were not the same as were in the hymnal. Um, that was a weird, like, I don't know why they should, I don't know why the words are different between the two hymnals, but the ones we grabbed were the different words. I apologize. Please be seated. Oh, hidden mysteries. Sun behind all suns, soul within all souls, and all we touch and all we meet, you are present amongst us. As bearers of your image, we come to be reshaped. Dependent on your mercy, we ask to be made. Hear us as we pray together, confessing our shortcomings <coughs> and desiring your strength and mercy. Hear us now, O oh God, as we join our voices together as one. Well. God, you know me. You know that I can be loving and kind, and you know that sometimes I get things wrong. I'm sorry for the times I hurt other people, forget to listen to you, and don't bother to take care of your world. God, forgive me. Jesus, please bless me. Holy Spirit, help me grow in love. We lift our confession and prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who died. Amen. In this Easter season, may we never forget the joy and hope of our faith. Through the sacrifice of Christ, we have been reconciled back to God, given healing, and given hope. My friends, I declare to you in the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, thank you. 
you for cleaning up well. Yes, thank you. It's very good. other friends' house, and I have means not feeling so well, so we're a small, tiny group, and you guys did a great job. All right, so what did we talk about last Sunday? Willow? Anybody want to help Willow? You don't remember. Did we talk about... After Jesus yes. was risen, he showed up. And, and after his uh, his they're like, what? Ah, are you alive? Okay. And remember, Thomas wanted to see and feel to believe that Jesus was yeah. risen. And we talked about how sometimes. Sometimes we need that. Sometimes we need a little reassurance. And how can we see Jesus now? Haley? By um, our heart. We can see Jesus by how we can see how people have love for each other. Okay. So Jesus didn't just show up a couple of times. He actually showed up quite a few times. Why do you think it was important that Jesus still showed up to his disciples? Willow? Because he wanted to see them again. He wanted to see, why did he want to see them again? missed him. They really loved Jesus, and they felt kind of lost without him. And so Jesus had to show up to talk to his disciples, to reassure them, and to give them comfort. And Jesus shows up to us now, too. Jesus shows up to us now in a hug, when we're sad, or in um, the chance to laugh with our friends. Yeah, or a little help when we're scared. Yeah, so Jesus shows up all around us. All right, who wants to leave prayer this morning? Let's see. Willow, I know you have. Addison, and you have it. You want to leave prayer? Uh, I mean, there's just four of you, sure. Kaya, you want to leave prayer? Haley, have you led prayer? Okay, I'll do it this time. Do you guys, you want, you've already done it. All right, get up here. Okay. <laughs> Say what's in your heart. Ready? Dear God. Dear God. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you. For love. For love. And for kindness. And for kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Sunday school. comes to us from Hebrews 4, 11 through 16. Therefore, let's make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following the same example of disobedience. Because God's word is living, active, and sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates to the point that it separates the soul from the spirit and joints from the, the marrow. It is able to judge the heart's thoughts and intentions. No creature is hidden from it, but rather everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of the one whom we have to give an answer. And also let us hold on to the confession, since we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, who is Jesus, God's Son. Because we don't have a high priest who can sympathize with our weakness, but instead one who is tempted in every way that we are, except without sin. Finally, let's draw near to the throne of favor with confidence so that we can receive mercy and find grace when we need help. Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their her journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. Jesus said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one, named Clo the one named Clopas replied, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place here over the last few days? Jesus said to them, What things? They said to Jesus, The things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, they recognized, he was recognized by God, and all the people as prophets. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All of these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning, and they didn't find his body. They came to us saying, that they had seen, even seen visions of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said, you foolish people. Your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for Christ to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Then Jesus interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, Jesus acted as if he was going to go ahead. But the disciples urged him, saying, Stay with us. It's nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But then he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road, and when he explained the scriptures to us? 
the gap up, then and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, The Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. One of the things that gets me about Jesus' disciples is that they are all just people. These two disciples walking down the road to Emmaus, they're just people. One of them is so just a person, we don't even get their name. We don't get a gender. There's actually thought that this might have just been a married couple walking back from Jerusalem after all that had happened. Now, we have no way of knowing that, but there are different ways to look at this, but all of them come to the same conclusion. These are just people. Jesus does not reveal himself to those in the ivory tower. Jesus does not reveal himself to the powerful. Everything about the Gospels Jesus' work is just normal people. The humans, humans like to follow important people, right? We tend to look towards our leaders for those that have the wisdom and knowledge. We tend to look upwards there's a reason that people can sit in ivory towers, because we let them. We recognize them in their ivory towers. We support them. And so we just assume, like, why would Jesus not reveal himself to religious leaders like pastors? Or to thinkers? Or to politicians? Those people that are important, right? Like, important people. I mean, if we're being honest, I'll include myself in that list. Why did Jesus not reveal himself to someone like me? And we as humans, we tend to let those important people do the heavy lifting. We just do what they say. We just follow. And this isn't an even th not wanting to think for ourselves. It's a, they're wise. They're knowledge. They're learning. And so we'll just let them do the heavy lifting. Because they can. But like with everything else in Scripture, Jesus is flipping our human, our human intuition, our human thoughts, our human patterns upside down. Flipping them upside down, doing the opposite of what we would expect. For me, this is a story about two reveals. Two reveals happen here. The first reveal is the revealing of knowledge. They're walking along the road and Jesus teaches them what is in the scripture, things that they could know, things that are in the words that are available to them. He teaches them. He teaches them so they can share. He teaches them so they understand. He teaches them the knowledge. And that is so important. And I think, too, Jesus expects them to understand. He's disappointed that they have the scriptures, and yet they don't understand. 
Because they should know. The normal people who have access to the scriptures, they should know. I'm not saying that I'm worthless in this institution. I'm not saying I don't serve a purpose. But you all have the same book I do. We all should be in this book learning and understanding the question. So Jesus is sharing with them the knowledge, the reveal of what happened, of how it fits into the story, of how the prophets saw this happen. And it is incredibly important reveal. It is incredibly important for these two disciples to understand, to get it. I do not want to discount the necessity of knowledge and understanding. But all of that teaching did not reveal who Jesus was. All of that learning along the road did not teach who Jesus was. All of the, this is what scripture says. All of these, these are the lessons you should have gathered. All of the tests and knowledge that anyone could have gotten that is not how Jesus revealed himself. Revealed elements of who he was, sure, but that is not how Jesus revealed himself. Jesus revealed himself in breaking bread with them. In sitting at table with them and sharing love with them. That is how Jesus revealed himself. Again, both of these are necessary and good. I would be lying to you if I thought the knowledge of what is in Scripture is unimportant because it is deeply important. It is really easy to manipulate people and to make them follow you blindly. And to convince them by following you blindly, they are not following somebody else blindly. If you don't know what's there, if you don't understand things about God, if you haven't actually read the book, it's really easy to manipulate people. But I can tell you, I have never had the love of God revealed to me in a lecture. I've had lots of knowledge shared with me. I greatly enjoy lectures. I, I am that person. Like, Get somebody knowledgeable to stand up and talk for an hour about something they're passionate about. It's great. Let me listen to it. I listen to things that don't matter to me if somebody is passionate. I grow in my knowledge of things that don't matter to me. Imagine the things that do matter to me. How life-giving that can be. But that doesn't share the love of God. At least not in a way that we Feels it. Jesus reveals himself when he breaks the bread and he gives it to them. Jesus reveals himself when he feeds them. And how did they respond? They got up and they shared it. They were like, no, the women were right. By the way, that's in a whole other sermon. That these, the women had already told them that Jesus was risen and they didn't believe them. That's a whole other sermon. But they went to the main disciples, they went to the 11 and were like, it's real. We saw him, he revealed himself to us. He is risen. 
They shared what they had learned. They shared how their hearts were on fire. They shared the love that they, ex they experienced when Jesus revealed himself. <laughs> so how is it then that we should reveal our faith? Because I know, like, the immediate answer, it's really obvious, right? We should be revealing our faith by feeding, by sharing the meal, by being in fellowship with people. The old hymn, actually, I don't know how old it is. In church terms, it's probably a baby, but they'll know we are Christians by our love. Like, that is how they know we are Christians. And yes, we, that is necessary. Do not, do not think I am putting this against something else. We have to reveal our faith through that. And we can't just stay there. Though. There's more to faith than just knowing God loves you. And don't get me wrong, that's pretty stinking huge. Like, that's, that's the foundation. Without that foundation, the rest of this is a house of cards that just falls over. But with that, how we build our church is not just on the foundation of God loves us. There's more to it. We build with knowledge of what Scripture tells us about God. We build with knowledge of what Scripture tells us how we should be living our lives, how we should build our societies, how we should direct our politicians to lead our world. How we should choose sacrifice over personal comfort. How we should choose sacrifice of ourselves so another can be protected or helped or fed. How we should choose sacrifice in the way that Christ sacrificed himself. Because again, to these two disciples, Christ revealed himself in two ways. The knowledge of who he of who he was, the knowledge part, but also the love and identity part. Both were necessary. Both enriched these two disciples and those that came after. And so one, share our love, reflect the love of God into the world. And to understand this, learn this, and share what it says with all. Amen. Please stand and join us in our hymn of response. Open our eyes, Lord. Forgiving sinners, 
and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. With believers at every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We have come to that wonderful part of Christian worship and Christian fellowship where we can share with one another and lift each other up and embrace one another with the sharing of our joys and concerns. I will continue to pray for Donald Luckman, who is um, just, if you're on her email list, or her text message list that are super long and lovely, um, you know that she's just doing what she can to um, live the best life that she can now. So we continue to pray with her as she enjoys this time. Uh, we pray with Chris, who is here with us and doesn't have a walker. She has a cane. Don't know if that's what she's supposed to have, but that's what she has. <laughs> uh, so we are we are celebrating that. Uh, can you pray with Marilyn? Did she have me? She was had surgery on Monday, and she's currently on the third floor of as a beast. Okay, so she had surgery on Monday. Not know she was still in the hospital, thank you. And she is on the third floor of Genesis East, so we uh, continue to pray with her. Um, she's Maryland, so she's probably healing faster than she probably should, because that's how she is. Um, continue to pray with Dean Dick Wales, uh, continue to pray with Dean and Reese Holloway, and um, thankful that Dean is getting better. And as I have prayed for a couple people in this congregation, that he may have the patience to heal at the speed that his body needs to heal and not at the speed that he wants to heal. Um, not going to name any other names, just saying that. Uh, praying for Heather Chapman, for Cooper, for Bryce Bowie, for Ken Larson, for Diane and Paul Gillespie, and their son John, uh, for Mary Lee's sister Roseanne, for Bruce and family and the death of his uncle, uh, for Linda and Kirk's daughter Paula and Linda and Kirk's daughter Law, Nora Brown's parents, Grandma and Grace Hubbard, Pat Collins' brother Mark, Mike Trujillo, our members and friends and care facilities, including Pat Jim Collins, Ken Stinson, and Roberta Larson, all veteran service personnel and their families, all have been sentenced to life without parole, all fire, law enforcement, and EMS personnel, all those suffering from war and violence in Ukraine and around the world, and for our mission partners and mission starfish Haiti. Um, I'm also going to say thank you for, uh, I'm assuming you were a good congregation for Chris while I was gone. I'm just going to assume that. Um, thank you for the time away. It was lovely to get away. I did not get anything done, but it was good to rest for a few days. Then it was good to go to the fever dream that is the House on the Rock. If you have never been, it's worth a visit. It's it's definitely something it defies explanation. But uh, it was good to get away and spend a few days at a bed and breakfast and um, just enjoy our anniversary together. So that was fun. Are there any other joys and concerns to share at this time? Matt. Um, there's a fellow driver that got shot in Arizona over a package that was highly unnecessary. Just pray for his family. Yeah, we're going to expand that a little bit. So the FedEx driver who was shot over a package um, just. The. The number of stories that have come out over the past couple of weeks of people just being shot for existing is, it's unsettling. Um, I, that's new. I guess I have all the power now. Anyway, okay, back on topic. Um, I just, I, I am stuck in and not knowing the answer to solve the problem of gun violence in the United States. Um, and as somebody who pledges no allegiance to any politicians or political parties, um, I haven't heard a solution that I think will actually solve the problem. That said, I guarantee you the, the policy of doing nothing is not going to solve it which is kind of what we're doing now. So um, we pray for this nation that is suffering from all of this violence. 
violence um, needlessly. And especially just people that are just trying to make a living or people that are just existing who are falling victims to violence. I just, it makes my heart hurt in a way that I cannot explain. So we lift that to God. So. Yes, I need to make sure that Wendy gets that in there. Uh, so I saw this morning, Sally has those special forms, those special documents. Um, they look the same if you're looking at churches or pastors. They're very recognizable from a distance. So I know that things are happening. Um, and these prayers as we are looking at all these. Yes, prayers for discernment, prayers for energy. Um, I know because I've been on the other side, I know this is an arduous task for everyone. Um, and I know that you have a lot of work ahead of you. So we ask for prayers for the PNC. Um, that your next pastor is available quickly. Not not like needlessly quickly, but like that they're there and ready to come serve. That far enough away that I can find a new position before they arrive. That would be good too. <laughs> um, are there any others? Uh, prayers for no. Sue Philibrand. She has had a court put in and she's currently uh, taking chemo. She was diagnosed with leukemia. So prayers for her and her family and friends that can Give her to her chemo appointments. Prayers for Sue Philibrand, who was diagnosed with leukemia and had a cord put in for chemo. Um, I know several of you out there are familiar with um, Yonder Motors and some of the staff there. Um, Mark Codwell um, has been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Um, he had been going through um, some treatment, but unfortunately, um, he's decided to no longer continue that. Not looking real hopeful right now. Um, so, if you um, know Mark or would like to reach out to Mark, um, now would be a very good time to do that. Um, so, for those who are familiar with Yonda Motors, uh, Mark Cardwell, Cardwell? Cadwell. Cadwell um, has been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer and has decided to discontinue treatment. And so, if you know him, um, it would be a good time to reach out. My uncle Tony Thornton, he's in, has dementia, Alzheimer's, whatever. He's in the last stages. They are called the doctors and just a matter of a few weeks. Um, Colleen's uncle Tony ha uh, Thornton is the end of his uh, dementia and they've called hospice. Uh, Wes's sister Marion fell and broke her hip, so we pray for her. That's just only because I want to end this on a better note that miracles do happen. Um, I know you guys have heard me several times pray for um, our driver at work, her husband Scott, who was pretty much at one point in time considered ready to pass away. They have done the final um, fixing up of the home. He has gone through enough rehab. He is walking with a walker and is moving back into his house this week. So miracles do happen. Yes. <laughs> Scott. Mm -hmm. Scott. Um, we prayed for him quite a bit. Uh, yeah, because I there was a point where I was waiting for Nicole to text me to say that he had passed and now he has started walking with the walker and is able to return home. So we are so thankful for that. I'm also gonna say one more thing, because I have done this. If I ask you to click, if I ask you to remind me of a name, it's not because I'm not listening, it's because I forget names very quickly. So, uh, I just, I am listening. I get the details about what happened. I just, sometimes the name, I don't get it written down fast enough. Are there any others? 
I would throw another positive one in that mix. My sister Roseanne is now at home with her oldest son. And so progress is slow but sure. That's awesome. So Mary Lee's sister Roseanne is home and progressing. So that is wonderful. Are there any others? If not, then let us turn our hearts and our minds to God. Loving God, we thank you for revealing yourself to us in love, for giving us the scriptures to know you and know about you, for giving us saints humble enough to share you, and for all of us the opportunity to be those saints that can share your love. In our thanksgiving for your love in this community, loving God, we also lift up to you many who are struggling. We lift up to you those whose bodies are struggling with illnesses and ailments and injuries. We lift up to you those whose minds are struggling. We lift up to you those whose hearts are mourning and who have lost. We lift up to you our broken hearts and our broken bodies, asking for your loving embrace. We lift up to you our broken hearts and broken bodies, asking for you to put healers in our midst, to fix what can be fixed, to comfort what can be comforted. And when we reach our end, to help us reach that end, grace and dignity and peace. Loving God, as we lift our concerns and our broken hearts to you, we lift our broken world to you, we lift all the violence around us to you, we also recognize the joys. And we lift thank prayers of thanksgiving to you for healing, for change of situation, for life renewed, for relationships restored, for rest given, and peace received. Loving God, as we lift all of this to you, all the prayers that we have said aloud, all of the people and souls who are struggling and people and souls who are rejoicing, and those things that we say silently on our hearts and our minds that we share aloud, we lift them all to you in the name Jesus, who takes our words, our thoughts, the meditations of our hearts, and makes them good and pleasing to your ears. And now, loving God, as we have lifted our voices and we have lifted our minds to you, now we join our voices as we well, using your prayer, your friend, Jesus taught his friends and disciples, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I am just going to say this now so I don't forget. Before the benediction is when we are going to do the meeting. Let's make it fast for me. As we come before God with our tithes and offering, let us remember the words of Micah 6. What does the Lord require of us? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Thus we bring our money, gifts, and whole lives as an offering to God. Will the ushers please help us give our offerings? <laughs>